Hello, this is Survival Garver, and today we're taking a look at the OpenL number no. 9 DIY folding knife. I made a version of this video last week, but apparently about four minutes in it didn't have audio, so this is my version of redoing it. Um, since all my videos are one take videos, um, yeah, if it's a screw up, I just delete the whole thing and start again. Alright, so this is the OpenL number no. 9. OpenL has been on my channel before, uh, the company is made in France. Um, so this is a fiber reinforced plastic handle. So in like wet weather conditions, if your hands are sweaty, you say if it's in summer or April 1st of 2024, where it's 95 degrees in North Carolina, and the landlord won't turn the air conditioning on yet. Um, so that, that's good in this case, so your hands don't slip on this. Um, anyway, um, so here, this is what they call a Vibo lock. I'm not sure if I say that right. Uh, Biro block. My apologies, I cannot say this word right. Biro block, B I R O B L O C. It's a locking ring. And unlike most that have like a liner lock of that nature or um, some kind of access lock, this uses a collar that turns. You see this little wedge shape in here? Well, if you turn it, it prevents the blade from opening. Now, if you turn back the other way so it's straight. You can open the blade, and then there's that seam that's a bit shallower there. Turn the color again, and it locks the blade. So it's a nice positive lock. So a little bit of uh, information about this. In its closed form, it's only 4.6 inches long. It's got a 3.6 inch long. This is a 12C27 um, Sandvik uh, stainless steel blade. Okay. Uh, overall length is 8.3 inches. So you got a regular plain edge, uh, like a drop point blade. And it's quite thin, and most of almost everything open L is really thin. Um, they're usually like carving knives and, and specialty knives. Um, but this one is pretty much made for an electrician of some sort or a DIY hobbyist doing electrical work. I think that's what the major basis of this is. So we have a wire cutter and wire stripper built into it. So that's kind of cool. It's got a decent spine, even though the blade is really thin on the long on the other side. Um, you'll also notice that there's a flathead driver and a Phillips head. This is a Phillips number two, which is sticking out a little bit at the moment because I think I wedged it in there a little farther. Um, but it comes right out. All you do is put it in the slot and push up. And it locks in. It just narrows and locks in. You pull it down and out. Take it out. Same thing works with the uh, narrow flathead driver on the other side. So, where does this go? Mm, doesn't go up there. What if I close the blade so I don't hurt myself? Okay, so uh, where does it go? It doesn't. <laughs> Hope it doesn't go there because that doesn't seem to be a good idea. Although you probably could in this position, although one side is weak, you could probably use it for leverage. But not recommended. Hmm. Let's see, lanyard hole. Oh, look at that. There's a little notch at the bottom. So this right in there and if you can hear it it's a pretty strong magnet if I get this to focus there we go there's a magnet at the end there this will fit all quarter inch drive bits so I'm gonna put this one back up take this one out obviously the one that's a little bit harder for me to remove is the side I don't use very often and you know, it fits in in kind. So if you have Torx, if you have Hex, if you have TriStar or some kind of security bit drivers you use a lot, then that's an option. So that's pretty cool. The other nice thing is if you took the bits out and you were using the knife and you were trying to use for something for leverage, these recesses hold really well. So 
I mean, that gives you a lot of grip because your hands will get stuck into it. Now, if the bits are back inside, and it doesn't matter which side they go on, so I'll put the flathead on this side this time. I fell to on this side. They also give you some extra added grip because they stick out just a little bit. So it helps you with some grip. Open this back up. Just take another look at this kind of workmanship on this. So there's the Open O insignia and that, which is a crown, and essentially that. Um, I giggle every time I see it. So it is that. If, if you have a weird sense of humor, you might find that be kind of funny. Now, Inox. I discussed this uh, on the last video with Open L's. Inox is a stainless steel. Um, they have a, another brand called, uh, or another model called uh, Carbone, C-A-R-B-O-N-E, which is a carbon steel. Uh, stainless steel will resist corroding, but uh, will resist corroding better than a, a carbon steel blade. But a carbon steel blade is stronger. So, you know, but a carbon steel blade will rust really quickly. Um, so this is for like an all-purpose all use kind of thing. So if you have this outdoors, maybe you have it in the back of your boat, in your tackle box, if you change the pits out to whatever you need. Leave it in your car as a part of your emergency tools. You know, maybe you have to cut a hose on the side of the road. And, you know, you get the, the right size. You have the number two Phillips, but you get a, maybe a larger flathead for hose clamps. You know, that's an option. And having the extra little uh, wire cutter, wire stripper, I mean, you could use it for all sorts of things. Um, but uh, that would probably be a really good DIY tool for most people. Um, this does come in yellow and gray. The yellow, for some odd reason, is cheaper on Amazon than the gray. I'm assuming because most people don't like yellow. And the reason I picked the yellow one when I bought it um, was it's different. You know, I have a lot of knives and a lot of tools that are black and gray. Uh, so having something that's a vibrant color is easy to find in my toolkit. This is actually going in the car's um, toolkit. And you never know when you need something like this. Um, of course, because it's a quarter inch size at the end, you cannot really use it to try to remove a nut that size. Um, because it's not flat. Oh, it sticks out just a little here. So if you try to put that on something like an actual nut and turn, it's probably not going to work, especially depending on how, how much tension there is, how much torque. Um, so I wouldn't suggest that, but I would suggest putting kind of whatever bits you need in it. All right. So that's about it. Um, this full length is 8.3, I don't know if I said it before, this is 8.3 inches long. The blade is 3.6 inches long, which makes the handle 4.6 inches long uh, in its closed function. Of course, if you want to prevent somebody from opening it up randomly, make sure you turn the collar. It's really easy to turn it. And that will lock it so nobody can accidentally open it up. So that's about it. Uh, there is some, I don't know if I can get it on camera. There's that symbol i guess to show you how to get the bits out uh, if the bit is facing forward you pull it down if you need to lock it you put it back up um i mean, I mean if you could read hieroglyphics or um emojis kind of thing you should be able to figure that out uh otherwise it's kind of weird when you first look at it like well that doesn't make any kind of sense but I guess it does. That's supposed to be the bit instead of a rocket ship falling in down or going up. I don't know. So that's it. All I have to say on the open L. Uh, let's see if we get that to focus. It's hard. Um, so, uh, Sevio France. Uh, my French accent is pretty horrible. So, uh, oh, you know, merci beaucoup. Or thank you for watching. Um, but, uh, questions or comments leave them below I'll answer them as soon as I can 
any more video uh, uh, issues like the lack of sound, just tell me and I will see what I can do about fixing it. It may just take me about a week. Um, and that's about it. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, so thank you for watching. Oh, uh, all the information will be in the description uh, where you can find it on Amazon. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching and have a glorious night.